everyone and welcome to Independent Art Storytime. Well, the rain started again today so I thought it might be quite nice to snuggle up with the story. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get through it without having a good cough. Um, unfortunately I have been struck down by the hay fever which is particularly horrible this year. So I hope my slightly gravelly voice and uh, the occasional cough will not disturb your enjoyment of today's story. We're going to go back to the fib by George Layton and today we've reached the firework display. Norbert was hanging from this branch, swinging his legs about and trying to break it off. If the park ranger had come by and seen him, we'd all have been in trouble, and Barry got hold of him round the ankles. Norbert, I'll do you if you don't come down. Norbert pulled his legs free and moved along the branch towards the trunk. Barry chased after him and tried to pull him down again. But Norbert had managed to hoist himself up to his tummy and was kicking Barry away. Get off! Barry punched him in the back of the leg. Well, get down then, or, I'll, or you'll get us all into trouble. Park Ranger said we could only take the dead stuff. We were collecting for bonfire night. We were going to have the biggest fire in the district. It was already about 12 feet high, and it was only Saturday, and there were still two days to go. Three if you counted Monday itself. We built the fire in Belgrave Street, where the council were knocking the houses down. There were tons of waste grounds, there was no danger, and we'd found two sofas and three armchairs to throw on the fire. Norbert dropped from the branch and landed in some dog dirt. Barry and me laughed because he got it on his hands, and I told him it served him right for trying to break the branch. You stupid Norbert, you know the park ranger said we could only take the dead branches. Norbert was wiping his hands on the grass. I thought it was dead. I threw a stick at him. How could it be dead if it was still growing? You crack as you are, Norbert. The stick caught him on the shoulder. It was only a twig. Don't you throw lumps of wood at me. How would you like it if I threw lumps of wood at you? Don't be so soft, Norbert. It was only a twig. Norbert picked up a big piece of wood and chucked it at me. Luckily, it missed by miles. You're mad, Norbert. You ought to be put away. You're a blooming maniac. You started it. You shouldn't have chucked that stick at me. And he went back to wiping his hands on the grass. Was it echoes like a stick? It were a little twig and it's no good wiping your hands on the grass. You'll never get rid of that pong. Suddenly, Norbert ran at me, waving his hands towards my face. I got away as fast as I could, but he kept following. If you touch me with those smelly hands, I'm warning you, Norbert. I picked up a brick and threatened him with it. I'm telling you, Norbert. Just then, I heard a voice from behind me. Hey! It was the park ranger. You lads, stop acting the goat. You, he meant me, what do you think you're doing with that? Note. I dropped the brick on the ground. Just playing. And that's how accidents are caused. Now come on lads, you've got your bonfire wood, on your way now. I gave Norbert another look just to let him know that I'd meant it. And he sniffed his hands. I don't smell anywhere. Barry and me got hold of the bottom branches and started dragging the pile and Barry told Norbert to follow on behind. Norbert, you pick up anything that falls off and chuck it back on. Come on Tony and come on Tony and Trevor will be wondering where we are. Trevor Hutchinson and Tony were back at Belgrave Street guarding the fire. You had to do that to stop other lads from nicking all the wood that you collected or from setting fire to it. Not that it mattered, because if they did, we'd just nick somebody else's. Mind you, I wouldn't have been bothered if our fire had gone up in smoke, because it didn't look like my mum was going to let me go on Monday anyway. And even if she did, she certainly wouldn't let me have my own fireworks. I'd been on at her all morning while she'd been doing the ironing. But why, Mum? All the other lads at school are having their own fireworks. All of them! Why can't I? Why was my mum so difficult? Why did she have to be so old-fashioned? Go on, Mum! She just carried on with her ironing. It washes well, this shirt. It was that navy blue one my Auntie Doreen had given me for my birthday. I'd like to get you another one. I must ask your Auntie Doreen where she bought it. Why can't I have my own fireworks, Mum? Why? She just wouldn't listen. I'm old enough, aren't I? Will you remind me there's a button missing off this shirt? Hi. I don't know what you do with the buttons off your shirt. You must eat them. 
She was driving me mad. Mum, are you going to let me have my own fireworks this year or not? She slammed the iron down. Oh, stop mithering me, will you? You're driving me mad. Well, are you or aren't you? She put the shirt on a pile and pulled a sheet out of the washing basket. No, you'll come with me and your Auntie Doreen to the firework display at the children's hospital, like you do every year. And if you don't stop mithering me, you won't even be doing that. Now give me a hand with this. She gave me one end of the sheet and we shook it. It's not fair. Tony's having his own fireworks this year and he's three weeks younger than me and Trevor Hutchinson's mum and dad have got him a five pound box. We folded the sheet twice to make it easier to iron. Then they've got more money than sense. That's all I can say. I'll pay you back out of my spending money. Honest. My mum gave me one of her looks. Oh yes, like you did with your bike. One week you kept that up and I'm still waiting for the rest. That wasn't fair, that was ages ago. That's not fair, that was ages ago. I promised my mum that if she bought me a new bike, a drop handlebar, I'd pay her back some every week out of my spending money. But she didn't give me enough. How could I pay her back? You don't give me enough spending money, I don't have enough to pay you back. Well, why don't you save some? You don't have to spend it all, do you? Blooming Hummer. What was the point of calling it spending money if you didn't spend it? Mum? It's called spending money, isn't it? That means it's for spending. If it was for saving, people would call it saving money. You're only trying to get out of it. I was fed up. My mum was only trying to get out of getting me fireworks. She came over. Don't you be so cheeky, young man. Who do you think you're talking to? I thought for a minute she was going to clout me. Well, even if I had some money saved, you wouldn't let me buy fireworks, would you? She didn't say anything. Well... Would you, eh? She told me not to say eh, because it's rude. I don't think it's rude, it's just a word. Well, Mum, you would, Mum. If I had my own money, I bet you wouldn't let me buy fireworks with it. Stop going on about it, for goodness sake. You're not having any fireworks, and that's final. It blooming well wasn't final. I wanted my own fireworks this year, and that was final. Blimey, kids much younger than me would have their own fireworks. Why shouldn't I? Apart from being a waste of money, they're dangerous. Dangerous? Honest? She's so old-fashioned, my mum. Mum, there are instructions on every firework, and as long as you like the blue touch paper and retire, they're not so dangerous. Then she started going on about how many people were taken to the hospital every bonfire night, and how many children were injured, and how many limbs were lost, and if all fireworks were under supervised care like they were at the children's hospital, then there'd be far less accidents. She went on and on, and I'd heard it all before. I'll be careful, Mum. I promise. Oh, please let me have my own fireworks. And that was when she clouted me. Are you going deaf or summit? What? It was Norbert shouting from behind. You what, Norbert? He picked up a branch that had fallen off and threw it back on the pile. I've asked you twice. How many fireworks have you got? I've got over two pounds worth so far. Trust Norbert to start on about fireworks again. He knew I hadn't got any because we talked about it in the day earlier and Barry didn't help either. I've got two pounds worth and all and my dad said he might get me some more. It wasn't fair. I bet if I had a dad, I'd have plenty of fireworks. It wasn't fair. My mum hasn't got mine yet. Norbert snorted. He was always doing that. <laughs> I bet she won't get you in none either. She didn't last year. Well, she wouldn't even let you come. That was last year, wasn't it? She's getting me some this year. If only she was. Well, she better be quick. They're selling out. They've hardly got any left in Robinson's. Robinson's is the toy shop we all go to. Paul Robinson used to be in our class, but about two years back, he was badly injured by a car. He doesn't come to our school anymore. We see him sometimes in the holidays, but he doesn't seem to remember us. All right, all right, don't panic. She's getting him in the morning, isn't she? She ordered him ages ago. I don't think Norbert believed me. Oh, how many is she getting you? He isn't half a pest, Norbert. He goes on and on. I don't know. I'll see when I get home at dinner time. When we got back to Belgrave Street, Tony was throwing stones up in the air to see how high he could get them, and Trevor was riding round on my bike. There were stones and bits of glass all over the place. Hey Trevor, get off! You'll puncture it! I 
took my bike off him and leaned it against a rusty oil drum. Tony started to load the wood onto the fire. You've been ages. What took you so long? It's nearly dinner time. Barry pointed at Norbert, who was throwing a branch onto the bonfire. Ask him, monkey features. We spent 20 minutes trying to drag him off a tree. The branch rolled back and nearly hit Norbert in the face. He had another go, but it fell down again. And while he was doing this, Trevor crept up behind him. He grinned at Tony, Barry and me, and took a jumping jack out of his pocket. He lit it and threw it down by Norbert's feet and ran over to us. Norbert threw the branch up again, and this time it stayed on top. And just as he was turning round with a cheer, the jumping jack went off and scared the living daylights out of him. We all laughed like anything, but Norbert didn't think it was funny. Who did that? I bet it was you, he ran towards me. Trevor pulled another jumping jack out of his pocket and waved it at Norbert. Norbert went for him, but Trevor was too quick. Norbert chased after him and he got him in a stranglehold, and somehow Trevor got out of it. Blooming neck, Norbert, your hands don't half pong. What have you been up to? Barry and me laughed our heads off. So did Tony when we told him. Trevor didn't. He had to go home to have a wash. It was nearly dinner time by now, so we all decided to go home, except Norbert. He never goes home on a Saturday. His mum just gives him some money for his dinner and he stays out all day. I wouldn't like it if my mum did that. I went over to get my bike. See you, Norbert. Norbert had gone back to throwing branches on the fire. Yeah, maybe see you later. Yeah, maybe. I started walking with Tony and Barry, pushing my bike, and then I decided to cycle on ahead. I better get going. My mum will be getting fish and chips. We always have fish and chips on a Saturday. I pedalled off just as Barry called after me. Yeah, we'll have to come round after and uh, look at your fireworks. Oh, blimey. I braked. Oh, I've just remembered. I've got to go to my Auntie Doreen's with my mum. My Auntie Doreen's doing her hair. I've just remembered. That wasn't a complete lie. My mum was going to my Auntie Doreen's to have her hair done, but I didn't have to go with her. Oh, why had I opened my big mouth earlier on? They're bound to find out why my mum hadn't bought me any fireworks, especially when I don't turn up for the bonfire on Monday. Why was the I the only one not to have any fireworks? I took a shortcut through the park. You're not supposed to cycle in the park, but it was a lot quicker. Anyway, there was hardly anybody about and the park ranger was most likely having his dinner. As I was going past the swings and slides, I saw this ginger-headed lad sat on the kiddies roundabout. He was going round and round, very slowly, and he had a brown paper bag on his lap. Nobody else was about. Hey, you're not supposed to ride bikes in the park. He had a blooming cheek because children around about over 12 aren't allowed on the swings and roundabouts and this lad looked about 14. Well, you're not supposed to ride on the roundabouts if you're over 12. He pushed himself round a bit faster with his foot. I know. He was a funny looking kid. I didn't know him, but I'd seen him around a few times. He was always on his own. I think he went to St Matthew's. He held up the paper bag. Do you want to see something? I wondered what he got in it. No, I'm, I'm late for my dinner. He stopped the roundabout with his foot. I've got some fireworks in this bag. I got off my bike and wheeled it over. He did have fireworks in his bag. Tons of them. Bangers, volcanoes, silver cascades, dive bombers, jumping jacks, flower pots, everything. Every firework you'd ever seen. Where did you get them? He looked at me. From a shop. You want to buy them? I ain't got any money. That's when I thought of it. I must have been mad. I was mad. I'll swap me bike for them. He got off the roundabout. All right. He held out the paper bag and I took it and he took me bike and cycled off. I must have been off my head. I ran home, clutching my paper bag, went in the back way, hid my fireworks in the outhouse behind the dustbin. I didn't enjoy the fish and chips at all. I kept thinking about my stupid swap. How could I have been so daft? I still had to go to the fireworks display at the children's hospital with my mum. After dinner, my mum asked me if I wanted to go with her to my Auntie Doreen's. No, mum, I, I might meet Barry and Tony. What I thought I'd do was go back to the park, try and find that lad and ask him to swap back. I mean, it wasn't a fair swap, was it? All right then, love, but if you go anywhere on your bikes, be careful. I felt sick. After my mum had gone, I went outside and got the bag of fireworks. I was looking at them in the front room when the doorbell rang. 
It couldn't have been my mum because she's got a key, but I put the fireworks in the cupboard just in case and went to answer it. Norbert, Barry and Tony were standing there. Barry looked at the others and then looked at me with a kind of smile. We saw your mum going up Dearden Street. She said you were at home. I didn't say anything. I just looked at them. Norbert sniffed. Yeah, so I thought we'd come back and look at your fireworks. Norbert grinned his stupid grin. I could have hit him, but I didn't have to. You don't believe I've got any fireworks, do you? Tony and Barry didn't say anything. Norbert did. No. I'll show you. I took them into the front room and got the bag of fireworks out of the cupboard. I put them on the carpet and we all kneeled round to have a look. They were really impressed, especially Norbert. Blooming Hummer, did your mum buy you all these? Course, I told you. Norbert kept picking them up, one after the other. But there's everything. Look at these dive bombers and look at the size of them rockets. Tony picked up an electric storm. These are great. They go on for ages. The three of them kept going through all the fireworks. They just couldn't believe it. I felt really chuffed. I better put them away now. Norbert had taken out a sparkler. I've never seen sparklers as big as these. Let's light one. No, I'm, I'm putting them away now. I wanted to get rid of Barry, Tony and Norbert and see if I could find that lad in the park. I proved I'd got my own fireworks now. I could make some excuse for not coming to the bonfire on Monday, but none of them could say that I hadn't been given my own fireworks. None of them could say that now. Go on, light a sparkler. Just one. They're really safe. Well, what harm could it do? Just one sparkler. I got the matches from the mantelpiece and Norbert held it while I lit it. When he got going, I took hold of it and we all sat round in a circle and watched it sparkle away. Suddenly, Tony screamed. I looked down and saw lots of bright colours. For a split second, I couldn't move. I was paralysed. Suddenly, fireworks were flying everywhere. Bangers went off, rockets were flying, sparks were shooting up to the ceiling. It was terrifying. Norbert hid behind the sofa and Tony stood by the door while Barry and me tried to put the fireworks out by stamping on them. I could hear Tony shouting, asking if he should fetch my mum. Yeah, get her, get her, she, she's at my Auntie Doreen's, get her! I don't know how long it took us. It could have been half an hour. It could have been five minutes, but somehow Barry and me managed to put all the fireworks out. The room was full of smoke and we were coughing and choking like anything. And I couldn't stop myself from shaking, even though I was sweating. I felt really cold. As the smoke cleared, I saw my mum standing by the door. Her hair was wringing wet. And all I remember thinking was that I wouldn't need an excuse for not going to the bonfire on Monday. Well, there you go. <laughs> Art fireworks nights different these days. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I always have, remember having Wellifant coming to visit school and telling you to put your fireworks in a tin box. And uh, there was always a really rubbish Catherine wheel, wasn't there? It never went round properly. Let me know oh, when well, my dad used to nail it to the fence, the garden fence, and it was the most disappointing thing. Much preferred a Roman candle. Anyway, we'll see you again for another story really soon.